In this video, I'm going to cover how to set up a folder in Zoho Work Drive linked to a particular CRM record. You can see here, I've got the Zoho Work Drive extension installed, and for this particular record, it's working well. I've got some attachments in there. But if I go to another lead where I haven't uploaded any attachments, I've got a problem. If I want to programmatically add an attachment to this particular record, there isn't actually a work drive folder ID set. In order to solve that, I've been talking to Zoho support about a solution for that. What we need to do is use some Delude script in order to create the folder and link it to this particular record. What we do, and I'll share the code, we run a series of API requests. In order to trigger those API requests, we need to first set up a connection. For that, we go to set up developer space connections. You create the Zoho work drive and give it access to all of the permissions required. I've already got one here, but I'll make a new one. We click on add connection. We go to Zoho OAuth. And then you have to come down here and find work drive and basically tick all of the work drive boxes. Okay, now you have a connection called in my case, work drive two. Then using your custom function, I might give you a, a bit more background on this, but I'll yeah, show you the code here, which I'll include as a, a snippet later. We basically, we run a, a whole bunch of delete scripts to first get the Zoho user ID, and then we get the team that the user is part of, we can then get the Zoho work drive user ID. And then after that, we can get the private space ID, which is a, a section in Zoho work drive for that particular user. And then we are able to create a new folder in that private space and leave making a new folder within that private space. You might be thinking at this point, if it's a private space, does that mean that other users can't access it? Uh, that question too, but I've logged in as another user here and I do have access to that folder still via the work drive extension. So this should work. Okay, so there's some code here, which is probably not tremendously useful if you're not a developer, but I'll give you the full picture. Basically, what I am trying to achieve with this code is that for my Twilio extension, people have asked that when a new MMS message or a WhatsApp message with an attachment arrives, they want to be able to put those attachments into WorkDrive. Because currently the images that get attached, they just sit in <clears throat> they sit in Twilio where they're stored for about 13 months, and then after that they're gone. So you probably want to have long-term long -term storage of some of them if they're relatively important. And what we can do is using the code that I've got, I'll share all of it, we can basically copy all of the, this is a URL pointing to an image, and we can then store that image in our work drive folder for that particular record. What you'll do, you'll jump into workflow rules Hopefully this is useful, even if you don't have the exact same requirement, but you can get a bit of a sense of what you might do. I'm going to trigger a new workflow on a new MMS message. The 
I'm going to limit it to, to, to records that do have a some MMS content in there with images to attach. Then I'm going to run a function. I've already got the function there because I've already set up this workflow. That the steps you would follow is click on write your own. And then I've got some code here where it is pulling the data out of the Twilio payload, finding, for example, it'll have an image like this, which doesn't have a file extension. So then we have to dig into some of the metadata to figure out if it's a JPEG or a PNG. Once we have that, we've got a URL, which is publicly accessible. And then using that, if we already have a work drive folder ID linked to that record, we can upload it straight in. Otherwise, if we don't, then we need to create the folder first. Before we can upload it, you can't just pass a URL. You have to use invoke URL first on that image URL. That's why it has to be publicly accessible. And then after that, you can use a work drive upload file pointing to the work drive folder ID and giving it a file name and using the connection that you created earlier. If you don't have this exact same requirement to work with Twilio attachments, hopefully you can still see how you would use this. Most of the code would be similar. Starting from here, you just have a slightly different approach to how you would get the URL for the file.